Welcome back. Today we're talking about categorical variables, right? And in R we call those factors. Okay, super duper easy. There's nothing too complicated about it. The first thing to know about categorical variables is they can be ordinal, so they can have a natural order to them. In other words, uh, small, bigger, biggest. Or there may be no natural order to them. In other words, blue eyes, green eyes, uh, brown eyes. But R will, if an order isn't given to a, and we call these orders levels, by the way, if R isn't given levels, it will just naturally put them in alphabetical order. And you might not want that. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to firstly define what the levels are uh, and change them, some, you know, make them what you want them to be, and also define the order that they come within. And we use a package called 4Cats. Not difficult to use. Uh, you're going to love it. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Next thing I want to tell you is everything about this lesson. I'm, I've created this lesson in uh, our studio, in, a, in part of our studio called Quarto. And we, in Quarto, if you hit render, you get a PDF. Here's the PDF of the lesson. Uh, the PDF has got about 10 pages. And you'll notice it's got all of the code and the outputs in the PDF. At the end of this lesson, there's going to be a card that you can click on, download the PDF, and you can go through this lesson in your own time if you want to, and you'll have all the code. The other thing to remember is I only use well, as much as possible, data sets that you have access to on your computer, right? So in this case, there's the GSS CAT data set. It comes with the 4CATS package, right? And if you've installed the Tidyverse, you've got the 4CATS package. And if you've got the 4CATS package, you've got the GSS CAT data set on your computer right now. So you can replicate everything that I'm doing at home on your computer. Got it? Okay, let's keep going. Boom shakalaka. We go to the beginning of the lesson. And I'm going to start just by talking about dropping unused levels. Because sometimes there'll be a variable and there'll be levels that you not you don't even know that they're there because you don't see any observations that have that. Um, and let's have a look. GSS cat's got an example of that. If I ask for the levels of GSS cat race, right? So this variable over here, the race of all of the participants, it says that there's other black, white, and not applicable. Right now, you might think, well, maybe there are observations in the data set that have this, you know, that fall into the are not applicable category. But in actual fact, if we create a table with that variable, and by the way, I've used select just race and pipe that into the table because the table will just want one variable. Uh, if you use more than one variable, it'll create like maybe a two by two table, et cetera, et cetera. Right. We can see that not applicable has got zero observations. Right. In which case, we don't want that level because especially when it comes to the analysis and data visualization, it gets a bit messy. So we want to get rid of levels that, that are not used. We can do that very easily with the factor drop, FCT drop function that comes with the 4CATS package, right? And it's a simple mutate. We say mutate race equals factor drop. Race, pipe that into the table, and voila, we've got other black and white. The not applicable is gone. Boom, shakalaka. First problem solved. Let's keep going. Right. Now let's talk about modifying the factor order, right? I've already told you that R will default by putting factors. The factor levels will be in alphabetical order. It's seldom that that would actually be what you want. Sometimes it doesn't matter at all, actually. You know, it, it makes no difference whatsoever. Sometimes it does matter, and let's talk about how we, how we can get that right. Okay, so uh, let's continue with the race variable. And let's say, for example, we wanted it to be white, black, and other. Okay, you'll see up here the levels that it gave us was other black and white from left to right. Let's say we wanted it to be the other way around for whatever reason. Quite simple, we use the factor relevel. Okay, the factor relevel function allows you to specify in a, in a concatenation, so using the C, this little C stands for con concatenation, the order that you want the levels, and you just type them out in the way that you want them. So we want white, black, and other. We then create another table, and there you go, white, black, and other, as expected. Okay, boom shakalaka, let's keep going. The next thing is you, you might want to order the factors, uh, order the levels by the value of the frequency count of that particular category, right? So, th and th this graph illustrates maybe what you don't want. Look, at we've got, these are the marital status of the, all, all of the people in this particular study, and we might want to visualize this going from the smallest to the largest so that we could sort of see that relationship, see the sort of, you know, see who, who, who lives on, who exists on which side of the spectrum. And that doesn't happen if you just sort of use the levels that come with the data set, right? So how do we get that? How do we change that? Let's go and have a look. Super duper easy. We use the factor in freak. Okay. And that's just basically, it's going to, the frequency 
and go from largest to smallest, but we're wanting to go from smallest to largest. So essentially, just have a look at this. We've got the mutate function. We're using the mutate marital status, or marital is equal to factor in freak marital. So it's going to order, it's going to order the factor levels from the largest frequency to the to the smallest. I want to reverse that, right? So I want it to go from smallest to largest. So I use another function that comes with four cats, which is the factor reverse. And that basically takes whatever order your, your levels are in, it does it the other way around. So we've used factor in freak to give us the frequency in, in declining order from largest to smallest, and then factor reverse or fac FCTREV to turn that around. And boom shakalaka, we've got a graph that goes from smallest to largest in terms of the count, in terms of the frequency of the observations for each of these categories. You got it? Of course you do. Let's keep going. Boom shakalaka. Okay, the next thing we might want to do is we might want to order the levels of one variable by the average value or by the value in another variable, right? So instead of, you know, in the example above, we ordered everything by the, the frequency of the, the observations of that particular category. Now we might want to do something slightly different. And this illustrates this quite nicely. Here we've got the religions, right? Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, ba ba, other, none, ba 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 ba. And here we've on the x-axis we've got mean TV, average TV watching time, watch time, right? And sure, this graph, this plot is accurate, but it doesn't tell us the story that we want to tell. In other words, if we could order these such that the order of religion was, was ordered by from smallest to largest, uh, the value of these dots, we would see a graph that looks like that tells the story, right? We can see, ah, Buddhists and the Hindu people in Eastern religion watch very little TV. People that categorize themselves as don't know, they seem to watch the most TV uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Protestants quite watch more than Catholics, et cetera, et cetera. Like no judgment from me. Uh, I watch a lot of TV too. Uh, so this is just what the data tells us. Okay, how do we get there? We use this factory order right over here. Now, I'm not going to get into this code at the top here. Um, this is just this is just in order to create the plot. Well, I'll tell you about it just quickly. Group by religion, and then we create a variable called mean watching mean TV with a summarize function, and uh, we we use mean TV. We have to say remove uh, remove missing values. If, if that part of the code doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. I've got lots and lots of videos on my channel. You can watch those all about how to manipulate data using dplyr and create plots using ggplot, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what this lesson is about, so I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to get into the details about that. What I want you to see here is we've 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 taken the religious, what the religious affiliation, relig variable. We've said factor reorder. The first argument is relig, which is the factor that you're going to reorder. And the second is by what value, and in this case, mean TV. And we've, we've in, the, in the code above, we've defined what mean TV is. Right, and then we've plotted that. And voila, there's our plot as expected. Next, let's talk about modifying the factor levels, right? So in this case, we've got party ID. That is the political affiliation that the participants of this particular study uh, subscribe to. And look, we've got every, everything here. Don't know, other party no answer, strong Republican, not strong Republican, independent, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is, accounts for all of those. What if we thought that these levels, we needed to kind of reword them a little bit. We weren't entirely happy with the, their description. And we might sort of think that all of this, you know, uh, no answer, don't know, and other party, we might want to kind of bundle those together in just one category called other. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, and it is just, it takes a little bit of typing, but you know, that's what you gotta do. Again, it's the mutate function party ID equals factor recode, right? That's that's the function we're learning about here. Factor recode, uh, party ID, that's the variable that we're recoding. And then it's simply, it's, you know, it's what you are turning it into equals what it is at the moment. Okay, and you just go through each of the lines is changing one of them. Down here you can see for other, I've made other equal to more than one of the existing categories and it'll turn all three of these down here into other and voila, you can see that that's exactly what it's done here. Now other, the other three have been kind of bundled up into this one and everything else has been changed, super duper easy. What if we wanted to do the bundling in a slightly cleverer way? Mm, very interesting, okay. Then we've got something called factor collapse, right? 
So again, mutate function, party ID equals factor collapse party ID. And now we use, we've created four new categories here. And these categories we've just said are equal to, and in the concatenation, we've listed the existing uh, categories that exist at the moment. And voila, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, nice and neat. As I said, there is more help in the PDF. You can click on these things to get more help if you want. On the screen at the moment, you'll see a little card. You can click on that card, download the PDF for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Take care. Speak to you soon.